In 2017, six animals at the International Wolf Center took part in an experiment to determine if they were self-aware, and being highly intelligent social animals, they all naturally failed? Or maybe we did. What if we've been overlooking the evidence that's right under our noses? Reaction videos have always been popular, and these animals reacting to their own reflections are one of the reasons why. Notice how some of them calmly admire themselves, whilst others are less calm, even a little upset. Researchers also watch this type of thing a lot, because the way that an animal reacts to its own reflection gives us an idea of how self-aware they might be. Notice I said how self-aware, and not if they're self-aware. This is because historically, we tend to think of self-awareness as a two-state switch, where animals are either brain-dead or about ready to enter college. In reality, self-awareness is a multi-dimensional scale that we're still only modelling hypothetically. So, for this video, let's keep it fairly simple with a generalised scale that'll work for us. On the lower end of the scale is consciousness, otherwise known as bodily self-awareness. Now this is characterised by deliberate control over one's body, and identifying as being separate from the environment. Any animal which doesn't have a tendency to eat itself likely has some degree of consciousness. So, sorry little nematode, your notoriety for autophagy hasn't done you any favours here. In the centre of our scale is social self-awareness, which, as you might guess, is found in many social animals. This allows the creature to identify not only itself, but also other members of its species, and to attach expectations to them. An example would be deliberately changing behaviour towards another member of a social group, depending on the specific relationship. This is often the baseline for self-awareness in animals, and it's the definition that we're going to be using today. Finally, near the top of the scale, we have introspective self-awareness, which is the conscious recognition of one's own feelings, desires, and beliefs. This isn't a far cry from sapience, which many people consider the pinnacle of self-awareness, and which we discussed in more detail back in Sentience vs Sapience. Learning just how much self-awareness different species possess has vast implications. After all, animals pervade almost every aspect of our society, from farming and hunting to pets, sports, services and entertainment. Not to mention the stress we place on wild animals through habitat destruction and climate change. Some of you are probably shouting at me right now something like It's obvious that animals are conscious. How can you run a project like this and question it at all? Because this is science. You need to win arguments against other scientists to have theories like animal consciousness accepted. You could just dispose of everybody who contradicts you. But I prefer the scientific method, where you present independently verifiable and empirical evidence based on a fair and repeatable test. And so, we've had to come up with a fair and repeatable test to evidence self-awareness in animals. The Mirror Self-Reflection Test was pioneered by Gallup in 1970 and intended to assess whether an animal could recognise their own appearance, thereby demonstrating a concept of self. Now, since mirrors are not typically found in the wild, the behaviour of an animal exposed to one for the first time usually progresses through four states. These include trying to socially interact with the apparent new animal, looking behind or touching the mirror, repeatedly testing the mirror to understand what they are seeing, and finally, the realisation that they are observing themselves. This test has already been passed by a bunch of non-human animals, including Asian elephants, great apes, dolphins and even magpies, and it's the same test that the animals at the International Wolf Centre unanimously flunked. 
When exposed to the mirror, the wolves did not respond socially to it at all, and completely bypassed the first stage of behaviour. They did inspect the mirror, and possibly showed some degree of mirror testing behaviour, but were otherwise uninterested in the fact that they could suddenly see parts of themselves that would normally be completely out of view. If they did have some concept of themselves as an entity, they should have been more interested in this. A mark test was also included in this experiment. An odourless mark is applied somewhere on the animal where they can see it in the mirror and, if they attempt to remove it, demonstrates that they recognise that they are viewing themselves. As a control, staff also pretended to mark them and observed the wolf's behaviour on both occasions. They didn't care about this either. Even after noticing the blue marks applied to their own feet, they just seemed to accept that this was normal. Okay, so wolf packs are social units in which members cooperate to share important duties and are submissive or dominant to others depending on their standing. These interactions would simply not be possible if none of the members realised that they were each their own entity. The researchers quickly realised that the wolves would already be accustomed to seeing their own reflections in the glass panelling of the viewing areas. The disinterest in the marks applied to their own paws and faces was more of a mystery, but as the team conceded, determining what constitutes an interesting mark for a wolf remains a challenge, since their fur is often stained after feeding anyway. This failure didn't come as a huge surprise to the team. Wolves had actually failed the MSR test before, not because of their lack of intelligence, but because the test wasn't designed for them. It was designed for primates, by primates, and as such relied predominantly on the visual sense. But canines see with their noses, so why would they identify the world visually when their olfactory sense, their sense of smell, is two orders of magnitude greater? Fast forward three years later to 2020 and a different team redesigned the MSR test to use sense as the variable. They based their experiments on a Russian developed sniff test for self recognition or STSR and utilised the help of the residents of Wolf Park, Indiana. You might remember Wolf Park from a previous video where I stole their amazing explanation of why wolves don't growl at their prey. It would be like a human getting angry at an ice cream cone. For the experiment, four separate wolves were each presented with three different canisters containing urine from either themselves, their partner, an unfamiliar wolf or an unfamiliar domestic dog. So if the different scents are the olfactory equivalent of a mirror reflecting different animals, how do you give the wolf's own scent a interesting mark for it to react to? Well, you infuse it with a heavy licorice smell, courtesy of anise oil. So the trial with three different canisters was repeated five times, with one of the canisters sometimes having the added scent of licorice. When no mark was applied, the wolves were more interested in the scent of unfamiliar canines, demonstrating that they could identify themselves as separate from another wolf or dog. But during the marked trials, the wolves were far more interested in their own or their partner's marked scent than any of the other samples. Once again as a control, the researchers included the licorice smell on its own in some canisters, which the wolves ignored. The mark itself proved uninteresting, much in the same way as a blue dot on the ground wouldn't be anywhere near as interesting as a blue dot on your face. From this, it appeared that the wolves were not only able to distinguish self from other, but also if the information connected with either of these changed in some way. Remember, the reason that this is so important is because we are directly evidencing it as opposed to just making assumptions. To add weight to their theory, the researchers also gave the wolves the opportunity to roll in their own urine. Some things that I say on this channel sound so weird to me as a human, but of course to a wolf this isn't weird at all. This is because scent rolling likely allows a wolf to collect an odour 
for their pack to investigate, so there's no point in rolling in your own pee. Unless it's marked with licorice smell, and when it was, some of the wolves decided that this was unusual enough to share with their friends. These results provided so much more information and insight than the conventional MSR test, and it shows just how much of a human bias can creep into our experiments. Roberto Gatti, the lead researcher in the Wolf Park STSR test, summarised it like this. If we want to understand more about the cognitive world of animals, we need to change our own minds. We need to be more open-minded, stop thinking as humans applying our tests to animals, and instead think about how the animals would design tests for themselves. If we can learn to conduct experiments from the perspective of other animals, I'm pretty sure that we'll discover some form of self-awareness almost anywhere we look in the animal kingdom. To gain that perspective, we're going to need to know how animals talk. While scent is key for wolves, communication in the animal kingdom is incredibly varied, and understanding that is going to be crucial to further our knowledge. In part 2, we will be taking a look at how recent advances in technology are already helping us further this goal, so if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss out. Since you've made it so far in the video, and thank you for watching this far, you probably care for wolves and wild carnivores like I do. I actually run this project on a non-profit basis. I fund fieldwork and outreach around the world through respected organisations, and you can help support these efforts through my shop, and you can also save 20% when you visit it with the code the world we lost as a thank you. That's all for this video, so don't forget, if we're going to make it as a species, we're going to need to learn to understand, coexist, and evolve. I'll see you next time.